Welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live and tonight we have the two stars of the recently released movie on Shudder, The Boy Behind the Door, Lonnie Chavez and Ezra Dewey. Guys, thank you for being here with us today. How are you guys doing? I'm doing yeah, great. How are you? It's good. Uh, Ezra, it's good to have you back again. Lonnie, it's great to meet you. Um, One more thing. One thing. It's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. Everybody mispronounces it. It's all good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> welcome here. Uh, I saw the movie this past weekend. I loved it. Uh, it's opening up yeah. to a lot of critical and fan rave uh, all over the place because it touches on some very serious topics that we'll get into in a little bit. Now, uh, Mr. Chavez, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> this is your first horror movie. Uh, was there any uh, difference going into a horror movie? You've been a part of This Is Us now for many years, the successful show that's on Bravo. What was it like going into a feature film and doing a horror film? A ho sorry, a horror flick. It was definitely different than anything else I've ever did because... Coming from a horror fan, I always wondered what it would be to shoot a horror movie. And I'll admit it was a little bit harder than what I expected. <laughs> it was a lot more screaming and kicking and crying than I thought was going to come. But it was really fun. And if I had a chance to do it again, I, I honestly would. You were, I mean, both of you are the stars of this movie. But, Lana, you just, you know, the motto between you guys is friends till the end. And you had a chance in the film uh, to leave, uh, but you don't. You go back to help your friend who is trapped inside that house. Uh, this is a story that deals with a very serious topic of child sex trafficking. First of all, let me ask both of you. Let's start with Ezra. Was there, you know, going into a movie with this kind of topic... Was there any hesitation on your end with your family? Did you guys have to discuss it? What was it like? Um, my parents were all for it, but the re real thing was is they wanted to make sure that I was up for it. So they were asking me like, hey, would you want to do this it's about kidnapping and all that? And I was like, heck yeah, I'd totally do that. It's a, it's a horror film. It's one of the first or yeah, my second. And when I when we first read the script, because I got to read it before the gin, we were like, yeah, this is totally awesome. I want to try and do this. How about for you, Lonnie, and your family? Really, honestly, the same for me. My mom and my dad were all up for it. They really thought that they gave a good message, and they also wanted me to shoot a horror movie for the first time. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm happy with what it came out. Yeah, happy with what it came out. Now, this story is given to us, the audience, through your guys' point of view. And let me give you an example. Um, Bobby's, uh, you know, what he does throughout the movie as an adult watching this, and I'm like, Bobby, why'd you drop the bat? Bobby, why'd you leave the keys in the door, you know? But you very quickly realize that the movie is meant to be told through your guys' point of view. And that's very yeah. important, and it's what makes the story so well. Uh, Donnie, did the directors have any prolonged chat with you uh, that this is the way they were going to go with this? Yeah, they really knew what they wanted. There was a lot of times where they were really going to give me directions, but they didn't really know how to put it because the directors always wanted to make sure that I was comfortable with what they were trying to tell me to do and that they weren't forcing me or seemed like they were forcing me or putting pressure on me, so... They leaned on my mom a lot uh, to make sure that I was comfortable and she was comfortable with what I was doing. And I leaned on her too. So it was kind of a like, collaborative little group effort thing we had. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, now, Ezra, your character in this movie, Kevin, is different from the gen, okay? Where you were alone and you had to b battle this demonic genie all by yourself. Uh, in this movie, you're more of the kid that needs to be rescued, okay? Yeah. And here comes Bobby to your aid. You know, how different was it doing both characters? Because looking at the film, 
Uh, well, first of all, let me ask you, which of the two did you shoot first, the Jin or the boy behind the door? I shot, I believe, I believe it was the Jin first. Okay, okay, but I assume they were both shot pretty close together? Yeah, it wasn't too far apart, actually. It was, we shot, we started shooting the boy behind the door, I think, before they had finished editing the Jin. Okay. Okay, got you. So what was it like for you having to play these two drastically different characters where in the Jin, you are like the one going up this up against this demonic genie and in the boy behind the door, you're the kid who's, you know, bearing the worst of this kidnapping and basically you're trapped and having to rely on your friend to help you. Yeah, it was pretty different because, you know, like you said, I went from the the savior of myself to like needing my friend to come rescue me and i think um sometimes i was like oh i want to be you know doing the rescuing obviously but i think it was it was it was definitely a different experience but i think it was still fun overall i got action scenes you know yeah and that's what i like about your character in this film is as the film progresses towards the end the roles do kind of flip a little bit we're not going to give away any spoilers for those who haven't watched it but they do uh kind of flip now lonnie there's a a line in the movie that is really chilling that comes from the antagonist and the line is basically saying her buyers would not be interested in someone that looks like you. That has some very, very racial undertones to it. What were your thoughts when you read that? And did the directors have, the writers who also directed it, have a talk with you about it and what they were trying to portray? How did that go about? Well, it's... It was, um, they didn't really have any talk with me about it because they knew I already on This Is Us and on a couple of other things I've had to deal with, the type of qualities of racism and other things like that in that area. So they didn't really have a talk with me. They just honestly trusted me and knew that I would have it or thought that I would have it. But when I was reading the script, I'm going to be honest, I didn't really look at it that hard okay i got I, you. I kind of expected i will not expect it but i i don't i barely even know how to answer this it was just i don't even know no big deal basically <laughs> I, I mean it was just i mean she says it in a passing way now uh kristen who was the other prom the prominent adult in this film what was it like working with her, Lonnie? I mean, uh, you guys shared a lot of scenes together, a lot of action scenes together. What was, was that like? Really, really fun. And the crazy fact is about her and about, I feel so bad because I forgot his name, but the dude that I stabbed, mm -hmm. the crazy part, they were like, they were some of the nicest people on set. <laughs> <laughs> like, you would think that they would be into the mindset all the time, but they were really, really nice about everything. And the gunshot scene was super fun to do with Miss Kristen because we did so many different takes and so many different varieties of it that we got used to it, made a couple of jokes after. It was it was pretty fun. Now, Ezra, your the majority of your scenes come in Act 2 into Act 3. While Lonnie was shooting uh, the first half of the movie, were you there in the background watching? Were you not on set? Uh, what were you doing? Uh... Yeah, I was on set. I was watching. You know, sometimes I would, I would, I'd have to be in school, right? Because you know, yeah. I had to do a certain amount of school hours. But the times that I did get to watch Lonnie doing his, you know, craft or whatever his scenes, that was super fun. Um, I enjoyed like you know watching it happen and like seeing all the takes and stuff. It was really cool and got and I got to like see you know how the you know, directors wanted to portray it and, you know, the notes that they would give. Yeah. It was really cool. Lonnie, you being, uh, for me, this is a reference that you guys probably haven't seen it, but like, you know, the Home Alone movies back in the 90s. Uh, <laughs> but this is more realistic. This shows us a kid who's put in a traumatic situation. How would they 
actually probably behave. So, Alani, was there anything that you drew on to try to put yourself in Bobby's shoes? I felt like the way that they drew it and the way that the directors had everything set up was very realistic, especially the part where Bobby's cleaning up the blood and he's freaking out at sometimes. I mean, in the movie, the kids are actually 11 through 13. So if you were 11 through 13 and that actually happened, you would be traumatized. Oh, you would yeah. be doing it like Bobby was doing. You'd worry about the blood. You'd worry whether to run or not to go save him. You wouldn't know what to do. you just stab the guy. I mean, <laughs> you wouldn't know what to do at all. Yeah. But it was, I wouldn't say easy, but it's definitely easier when you're actually on the set and you are you have the bloody clothes on, you're about to scream, kick, cry, you have the lines in your head, and you're just in Bobby's mindset already, just ready to fight for life. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Ezra, uh, this movie was written and directed by David and Justin, who also did the, the Jin. Uh, you mm -hmm. said the Jin was shot first. Did you have to audition for this one? because they already knew you from the gen or did they sort of come to you with this role? So here's the funny, so here's the funny part. So I booked the gen off of my audition for this movie. <laughs> so I auditioned for this and they, since they were, you know, they already knew, they already knew they wanted Bonnie. So they were looking for a, a Kevin and I came in and I, auditioned for it and obviously they liked me and i don't know what happened or whatever but they ended up talking to me and they were saying hey we would also like you we want you to do um the gin with us because that's i i don't know but i ended up getting the gin and then after we shot the gin they wanted me to come do the boy behind the door with them too that's so, so awesome gotta, that's good that's a two for one special yeah <laughs> Lonnie, as I said, as I'm watching this movie, I'm like yelling at the screen, you know, Bobby, don't do this, don't do that. <laughs> but again, you got to put yourself in the mind of a traumatized pre-teen uh, kid. Yeah. Uh, as you were filming this and you're shooting these scenes, the bat, the keys, accidentally stabbing a bad guy who deserved to be stabbed by the way uh, but any of that were you putting yourself like man if i was if this was really happening to me is this how i would be reacting did you ever yeah. put yourself in that mindset yeah i definitely did i feel like ezra did the same too i feel like it would be just just think of it yourself if you just got out the trunk of a car you woke up, you're trying to kick out the trunk of a car. Your best friend's gone. You finally get out. You get out of everything. You have a choice to leave or you have a choice to go inside and save your best friend, knowing that you both will be hurt if you guys get out. Mm -hmm. It's a very deep and scary thing to think about. It's a, Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, yeah, I mean, there's no right answer. Now, this was done years ago. You guys have grown uh, since then. Looking back at this film, I'm assuming you guys have watched it again now that it's out. Uh, do you guys like the aspect that it's not really adult focus? We don't see your parents, okay? Mm -hmm. We don't see the anguish of your parents finding out their kids have been kidnapped. We don't even know any situation, any story about your parents. Ezra, do you like that aspect of this film? Um. That it's yeah, told directly, yeah. you know, strictly from the preteen's point of view. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty cool because obviously there's not a lot of horror movies that are like that. There's mm -hmm. barely any because it's such a hard topic to you know uh, make a movie about. Um, but I do think it was good because um, I think that maybe the parents finding out may not have been, you know, super helpful to the story in general. I think that just the perspective of the kids and their story is just enough and is good enough. Yeah. How about you, Lonnie? Do you think uh, that the way this is shot, uh, me as an old man, I liked it. I loved it. Do you think <laughs> it's going to appeal 
to all audiences, you know, kids, teenagers, preteens starting to watch horror movies, all the way up to the uh, the avid horror fans as well? Yeah, I feel like the way that it turned out and the way that they wanted to do it was pretty good. You can just see how it is and how it would be through a kid's perspective and the fact that it could actually be happening somewhere. And it just spreads, I guess, a little bit more safety awareness for kids. Yeah, yeah. Now, when you guys, you know, met on the set, did you guys get along right away? Uh, both rough, roughly around the same age. Did you guys click? Well, we had uh, we had a chemistry read before we actually got to the set, and it was roughly two weeks or three before we three weeks before we started filming. But we had the best we had the best time. <laughs> like yeah. we were on the Evans, and Ezra came in and. Me and him just connected more than the other kids. We joked in between the lines. We had fun, and it just went just went smoothly. Yeah. You got Ezra. Did you guys have a lot of you know? Did you guys have a lot of fun between the takes and whatnot, and uh, you know, on the beach and all that? Yeah, that was fun. Um, Lonnie's super cool, and he's super <laughs> easy to be around. You know um obviously him being my age so we could like talk about things that are happening and on in our life that are similar and it was really nice to have somebody you know my age around the set so i'm not always you know having to talk to grown-ups <laughs> gotcha <laughs> so, I, I can relate a little bit even though even though me and lonnie are used to it because that's our job we're always going to be around adults because that's what we do but um it was nice having a kid Ezra, right. if, uh, you know, putting yourself in Kevin's shoes, do you think Kevin was just surprised that Bobby had an opportunity to escape, but yet he came back for you? Yeah, I think there's definitely a moment where he was like, why did you come back for me? You could have saved yourself, you know. But I think it's also, like, very, very relieving and heartwarming to see that he actually cares about me. Like we are really friends till the end. Mm -hmm. He's like a brother to me and he's going to stand by that. And I think it really shows the loyalty and the friendship that me or that Kevin and Bobby have. Yes. Yes. Now, uh, Lonnie, this movie has some, uh, you know, pretty bloody scenes in it. Uh, with you, you get hurt in the movie. Uh, but Kristen, man, she plays that psychopathic role beautifully. <laughs> what did you think of her performance? Her performance was amazing. Same with same with the other guys. I feel so bad because I forgot his name. <laughs> but same with the other guy. Their performance was amazing. And I it felt really good to work with them because off of how great their acting was in the scenes, you can kind of just feed off of it and you guys can just work with each other smoothly and get the flow right. It was, yeah. pretty, it was really fun. I want to ask you guys this question. Like I said, this film was done several years ago. You're, you're much older now. Take yourselves back then. And here is this sex, child sex trafficking ring. Okay. I mean, as a kid, that must be kind of like a foreign concept. Uh, maybe i don't know what it's like today but did you guys like have a lot of questions you were much younger than what you are today ezra i mean what thoughts were going through your head just about um, the plot of this story my my parents have always been very you know transparent with me and you know education or educating me about that stuff like they've never like hid anything about like all this you know some of the dark stuff in this world and like what to look out for um i i had i had a decent idea of like what it was about and like what they were trying to do with me in the story or whatever mm -hmm. but um yeah it never it never was like i don't want to do this because yeah. at the end of the day it's not actually happening to me in real life but it's still really sad to think about like that it does happen literally happening to kids somewhere yeah. in the world how about and, you, how about you, Lonnie? I mean, how did you react? I mean, you were younger. Did you grasp the whole notion and the concept of uh, what the directors were trying to do? 
Yeah, my parents, uh, same with Ezra, my parents always told me everything. They always wanted to tell me the truth to make sure I was fully aware and I was safe. So they always told me everything and I didn't really have questions when I jumped in. I really wanted to do it and my parents really wanted me to do it just because of the good message it was spread. Lonnie, having done a horror movie now, did you really enjoy it and you want to do a lot more? Yes, yes, <laughs> right away, yeah. I'll 100% do another one. It was so fun. Yeah. Well, Ezra, this is uh, at least your second one that you've done. Um, you know, are, Ezra, are you don't want to get, I know you're still young, but do you don't want, do you, are you afraid of getting boxed in for doing horror movies uh, throughout your career? Or uh, are you, whatever happens, happens? If I go down a horror movie route, dude, I'm, Totally okay with that. I'll do that. I'll do variety. I'll do anything, to be honest. That is I'll awesome. Do, I'll do a comedy, an action film, a horror <laughs> film. No. That's awesome. Guys, to our viewers, the movie out there is called The Boy Behind the Door. There's plot twist in there that we did not reveal any spoilers about. There's action. There's blood. It touches on, like I said, child sex trafficking and a whole bunch of other topics these two guys are amazing in the film yes it is them they're older now and but the film yeah. was shot a couple of years ago but please check it out the movie is available on shutter it's a shutter original i believe so check it out you won't be disappointed i want to thank ezra dewey again for being our guest lonnie thank you so much for coming on here as well you're um, welcome any final thoughts you want to share, Lonnie, before we go? Not really. I feel like you covered pretty much everything. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you to our audience. Until next thank time, you. on behalf of Lonnie and Ezra, stay safe and stay walking. Good night, everybody.